How big is the climate exchange market? I'll let, I'll let him tell you. How big, ultimately, do you think this market could be? I think it's a $10 trillion a year market. Say that again. Whoa. $10 trillion a year. You don't get a hat like that for beans. You just don't do it. $10 trillion a year. That's a lot of capital go around. In comparison, the value of U.S. company shares on major U.S. and foreign stock exchange equities market, $15 trillion. Got it? Ten, and they're selling smoke. There's a lot of money riding on this climate legislation, but remember, it's about saving the earth. It is. Now, this company, London-based Generation Investment Management, sees ten trillion dollars we got to get into that the earning potential is fantastic that's why they purchased a stake in the Chicago climate exchange they're the fifth largest uh, co-owner of the climate exchange got it Joyce Foundation tides Bill Air's brother mystery meat this guy helps funnel the money to climate exchange. This guy says it's worth $10 trillion. This company over in England says $10 trillion. We've got to get some of that, me blokes. And so they're the fifth largest owner. You know who, who's on this? Who's a, it's, it's incredible because this is, this is great. <laughs> I was shocked. Al Gore. Al Gore, it's, uh, when I say co-founder, some of the other founders is this guy, um, you know, names aren't important, well, it's, 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 uh, it's uh, David Blood, and he works for Goldman Sachs, that's the important part. Peter Harris, I don't have a picture of him, but he works for Goldman Sachs, and, uh, and then there's also Mark Ferguson, and he works for Goldman Sachs, okay? Now, 2006 comes along, climate exchange gets a boost of confidence when somebody steps out of the shower and says, my gosh, I think you may be onto something. 2006, remember that date. He's, they say, mm, we've got to purchase some of this ourselves. 10% of the company. <laughs> you, never, you never guess who it was. Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs. Yeah. We, we, but we haven't gotten to the good stuff yet. Yeah. We'll get to that in just a minute. So Goldman Sachs is the trouble. But here's the good news. We've also discovered today that we can save the planet with money. It's fantastic. Remember, through regulation, right there, that big stack of paper, through regulation in Cass Sunstein, the Goldman Sachs people will be taught a lesson. Not these, because they're currently working for Obama. And then we'll save the planet with Al Gore. Here's where we left off. The Joyce Foundation, kind of a shadowy organization where liberals take their money and then they give it to the Joyce Foundation. The Joyce Foundation can give it to anybody they want, and the people who donated to the Joyce Foundation don't have to have their names attached to it. They donate to the Tides Foundation, also to the John Ayers Education Fund. John Ayers is the brother of William Ayers. You remember the bomber? <laughs> yeah. This guy, shadowy figure, is on the board of the Joyce Foundation. He helps start and funnels the money to CCX, the Chicago Climate Exchange, where the head guy of the Chicago Climate Exchange says it's worth $10 trillion. Well, that gets this English company very interested. They're the fifth largest owner of CCX. Who are they? Al Gore and some of his former Goldman Sachs buddies. And then steps in in 2006, Goldman Sachs to buy another 10%. Got it? You see what we're building here? Structure. Structure, the exchange. You've got all the structure, the players. But what you're missing are a couple of things. You're missing, first of all, I'm just a bill on Capitol Hill. Remember him? Missing him. We need a global climate bill. And he's sad. Someday he could become a law. Now, the other piece that they don't have is technology. They need the big board, the machinery to make it all happen. Because remember, you're trading smoke. So it's kind of hard to keep track of all that smoke. Good news is, though, the bill's being worked on now by Republicans and Democrats, bipartisan. It's cap and trade. The machinery, hmm, the machinery's there. A patent for the device was worked on by CO2E.com CEO Carlton Bartels. After he filed for his patent on his system to trade residential carbon credits, he was killed in the 9-11 attacks. But his wife, 
shop the idea around, able to find a buyer for it. Well, a buyer ended up being a guy who, I hate to break it to you, not a good guy. Oh, he's committed massive accounting fraud, manipulated earnings on his company in order to make huge bonuses. Yeah, yeah. He didn't really go to jail or anything because, well, he's Franklin Rains and he's got a lot of buddies. He, uh, he was the CEO of Fannie Mae at the time. Fannie Mae and Franklin Rains, this guy's a shady individual and Fannie Mae, didn't they cause all the trouble? Aren't they involved in all the mortgage problems? Yeah, they actually bought the technology. Fannie Mae, what would Fannie Mae buy this technology for? What? Aren't they a mortgage company? Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? By the way, here's another weird coincidence. The U.S. Patent and Trade Office okayed that patent on November 7th, 2006. What happened on November 6, 2006? The Democrats took control of Congress. Just a coincidence. We want to thank Barbara Hollingsworth of the Washington Examiner for pointing this out to us when we gave her a jingle. So, now, Fannie Mae, who is congressionally mandated to make housing more affordable, is somehow or another buying technology for a climate exchange. That's weird, and they're posed to reap billions of dollars on a system that has absolutely nothing to do with their constitutional mandate. Hmm. Except that it would make your housing costs go up. That'd be good. Remember when Fannie purchased risky mortgages from banks and then bundled them all together and sold them to as investors as mortgage-backed securities? Remember, in fact, that's what Chris Dodd said. We gotta stop all of this crazy stuff, all the bundling. You know what's weird? That that destroyed the housing market. Sure, sure. The guy who did that, former Fannie VP Scott Lesmis, he's the one responsible for the bundling. Here's the good news. Not only will this new carbon trading system try the exact same bundling method, except they're, you know, you're, they're using smoke, but the guy who did it, Scott, Scott Lesmis, he's, he's part of this whole thing. Isn't that great? So don't worry. The only ones involved in this, you know, are the corrupt uh, Franklin Reigns, Mr. Redistribution of Wealth, which I haven't really introduced yet. <laughs> this guy, Barack Obama. But I'm sure he, he knew nothing about it. He's not involved. I'll erase this line right here, I'll tell you that. Nope. No call. Barack Obama, Franklin Reigns, Al Gore, Mr. Profiteer, that's great. And all the people who the House and Senate are currently saying are the bad guys, the Goldman Sachs people. <laughs> wow, this is going to work out great, much to your advantage. I'm, not these guys, not their advantage. No, no, no. Or these, who we don't even really know who that, forget about them. You know what, America? Last week, I started asking the question, why this? Why this? Why is nobody speaking out that this is a glo this is the beginning of global government? This is the financial regulation, 1,403 pages. And why, after all these months, are Goldman the only bad guys here? It's almost, if you've got a piece of $10 trillion, it's almost like you'd be willing to take a little heat now in order to get a piece of that $10 trillion, $10 trillion green pie later, huh? I challenge the media. I challenge you. Pick this apart. Pick it apart. No, no, no. No, I'm sorry. Instead, people will just say, he's crazy. He's crazy. He's brutal. Well, you see his chalkboard, he had smoky puffs. What is wrong with that guy? Why don't you do your damn job in question? Why don't you do your job and don't you think this is a little coincidental? Just a little bit? Oh, he's a conspiracy theory. No, this is all fact. This isn't theory, that's fact. And then all of a sudden, illegal immigration has leapfrogged global warming. Is it possible that's because Goldman has to take its hits to get the global government structure done and then they'll get the payoff? Or are you just going to continue to say he's crazy and not talk about the facts? Well, we'll, we'll see. 